Hello, John. Hey, Mark. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Having a great day. <laughs> I hear quite a busy day for you, I imagine. Yeah, it has. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you've got your, your film, uh, Cult Killer, coming out Friday, uh, tomorrow. So I imagine that's uh, kind of why you've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It's it's exciting. I'm I'm happy that we're uh, you know it's been a long time coming getting this movie out and and seeing the theatrical release that's going on with it. It's been really really special and really exciting. Yeah, that's great that you got it in theaters and well deserved. My review actually for it just dropped today uh, on my YouTube channel, and I appreciate you taking time and getting this opportunity to talk to you about Cult Killer. Uh, actually, I, I reviewed one of your films about five years ago, almost to the day. I have a uh, doom room right here. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Another UK movie. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Now, Cult Killer, uh, a crime thriller that you have here. You have some pretty big names. Uh, just to dive in real quick, would you give a brief synopsis and your words a bit about what Cult Killer is about? Sure. So for, so Cult Killers, it's a it's a revenge thriller. Um, about a private investigator who's hunting a killer in Ireland and through the course of her investigation ends up discovering who the killer is and ends up forming a dangerous alliance with the killer as they discover a much larger conspiracy taking place in, in the in the Irish countryside. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was I, I love going into the films cold. And so I wasn't quite sure what to expect. I did see the names that you have on here with this wonderful cast and watching it. Uh, it is a really character driven piece. Uh, how did you get this cast together? I mean, you've got Alice Eve, you got Antonio Banderas, but you also got a uh, all uh all win in there you've got you know you've got such a great group of talented folks how did this come together so when we were when we were putting it together so antonio and i'd worked with antonio before mm -hmm. um and we were talking with antonio about projects and and in through a producer's collective we were talking with antonio and he said well does john what does john have going on um and so we had pitched him we threw we threw him cult killer um and he read it and we we zoomed uh to talk about it stuff and one of the things he came back with was he goes i absolutely love the script he said i love the script i love the dialogue there's nothing i would want to change about it i want to speak every word that's been written for me wow um, <laughs> yeah that was a huge compliment for for especially for charles the writer um, right but but um yeah antonio antonio was the first person on board and we were deciding where to film it at, and we ended up in Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were we were going out to cast, and Alice was the next person that came on board. Um, and I hadn't worked with Alice before; she was one of the first people we went out to. And and so once she read the script, um, we spent some time zooming and stuff as well. And she said the same thing. She's like, "I love the script. I love the dialogue. I love the character. There's nothing I want to change about it." She's like, "Promise me if I do this." this is what we're doing we're making this and i said yes um and and it just sort of evolved shelly came along um shelly came along which was a, which was fantastic and, and shelly and i spent mm -hmm. a lot of time developing developing her character um and a lot of the irish cast that was that was a blessing that was a huge blessing unexpected blessing um the three you know Antonio and Alice and Shelley, they got on board and that's really got what got the movie going. And then we sure. started doing the casting in Ireland. Um, you know, I I was familiar with a lot of these people's work. I'm a huge mm -hmm. fan of of Irish television, UK movies and, and so on and so forth. And and so I was getting pitched a lot of actors and Olin was one of the first people I saw this whole, you know, I got this list of actors and a bunch mm -hmm. of photos. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And I'm like, Olin would be perfect in the movie. Um, so they sent it and, and Olin and I talked and it was funny. She was, she was so, she was doing so many things and she was so busy. Mm -hmm. She wasn't sure if she was going to be able, you know, to come mm -hmm. and do the movie. And we talked, we spent quite a while talking and we talked about the character and we talked about the story and we talked about the vision of what I was wanting to do with the movie. And, and she immediately was like, all right, I don't care what I'm doing. We're going to figure out how to make this. Work. <laughs> um, you know, and, you know, Paul Reed and Nick Dunning mm -hmm. and you know just all of these fabulous actors that, that that was one of the 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 hidden gems of shooting in Ireland that I wasn't anticipating was getting these just incredible actors that I knew from so many other works um, to come and play and be a part of this movie and bring so much 
to the movie. Um, the casting was just one of the best processes on this movie of any that I've done. Well, and uh hope this isn't taken the wrong way, but I think it helped elevate the film because you do have a crime drama, a, a crime thriller that hits a many number of familiar beats, but it's very character driven when I was watching it on how it hinges on their performances and everybody seemed to just be so on board with what you were doing, which is dark material. No, I appreciate that. And you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's one of the things you know, it, thrillers are a dime a dozen, you know, they're all over the place. And, and one of the things that immediately attracted me to to the script was the characters, the character stories that are taking place. Um, you know, as a director with everything that I've done, I've always been, I've always attracted to the characters and the story first. Is there a character story? I don't want to just do a genre movie that's just genre tropes and the effects. You know, I want to tell a good, good, strong character story. And so that was one of the things that really, attracted me to this i think it elevated it uh, above this, a lot of the other genre thriller movies um but you know being able to then continuously find ways to elevate it was was something that we were all constantly in search of and definitely being able to shoot it in ireland and shoot it in the countryside in ireland um brought so many the atmosphere and the environment and the isolation there's so many things that that, that 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 we were able to do with that countryside and with that environment and with those actors and with the feelings that it sets it apart from a lot of the other just sort of you know big city big city thrillers well I, and a lot of uh you know setting the, the locations you had were beautiful but what i always love when you take a film like this and st put it in another country say ireland especially it immediately, I think, gives it another character because a lot of films similar to this are in the Western cinema, are in the U. New York, you know, Boston, you know, Baltimore, <laughs> you know, so a big city crime type thing there, or even you know, in a rich area like say Beverly Hills, you could exactly. see exactly, yeah. Movie. But by putting it there in Ireland, that gave me a little bit of a, a disconnect in a good way feeling. Going, okay, this is it immediately makes it interesting because European countryside is always visually interesting. Oh, trust me. That was <laughs> <laughs> myself, my DP and my producer, Richard, the three of us were, we were just constantly walking around going, I can't believe we're shooting in Ireland. And I can't believe all this great, this incredible production value in the, in the atmosphere. And, and it affected, it, it, it affected a lot of the ways that we, that Austin, my DP, the way that Austin and I, decided how to shoot the movie you know sure. um you know it's a, like you said it's a dark movie and we deal with a lot of dark thematic material in in the script and we wanted to embrace that with our locations i mean there was lots of places that got discussed of where to shoot it and obviously big cities were, were was one of them and so when when it became ireland you know we immediately were like well, let's get it out of dublin let's get it into the countryside to to kind of embrace all of that and it was you know the the raininess and the clouds and you know the deep greens that are just inherent in ireland those were a lot of things that we wanted to capture and it really affected the color palette and the tone of the movie to kind of bring that gray and the blacks and and the darkness um you know surrounding surrounding the story with with what everybody was getting to look at and i thought it brought sort of a very ominous nature <laughs> on top of an already ominous story <laughs> well and then the architecture too. I mean, the the one location you picked for the the main house for for our folks. How did you find that place? Because when you when you drive up the alley and you get the first reveal of that place, I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Yes. <laughs> that was it. Was funny. So we we were we we were looking for some locations to deal with the hotels that were going to take place in the store, sure. the hotel rooms and such. And there and there was an there was a closed down hotel um north of north of dublin mm -hmm. and so we were driving out there and as we as you go as you turn off the highway and you go down the road this castle the the mansion was there on the right as we're going up the road and i know as we kept driving up the road austin and i are both looking out the window going wait 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 what's that <laughs> Um, and it turned out that that was part of the entire property that the oh. hotel was set on. Um, and at the time when we were shooting, um, the house was empty. Um, it was the ownership was being turned over and the house was empty. And and so we talked to the location manager and said, can we go back and look at that as well? Um, and I mean, some of it like 
without giving anything away, like when they first pull up, there's a mm -hmm. turret and a tower on the right hand side. Um, that's like an eighth century, you know, tower, um, you know, and, and then yeah. the, and the castle and then the house have all been built over centuries and centuries. And, you know, there's a lot of within the story, there's a lot of characters that are very, very wealthy. And, and part of the part of the story is about old world money um, mm -hmm. and old world power. And to be able to put them into something as old world as a castle, you know, was was just spectacular. Yeah, it looked spectacular. I just saw that, and and that's got to be easier than for you to help with directing the the cast because you're like instead of saying, okay, imagine this is a castle, we're gonna put they're they're actually there, and some of them realize the history of that location. That's it. Well, that's one of the things we were joking my myself and some of the actors of like a lot of actors will talk about that they really don't discover the character until they discover the clothes. You know, sure. that that shell mm -hmm. sort of begins to inform them of, of the character and the story that they're telling. And we found with this movie, more than anything that I've been involved in, that the locations mm -hmm. did this had the same effect on the actors. The, the, sure. As they got to experience and, and experience those locations and see them, and I realized very quickly, fortunately, while we were still in pre-production, that I needed to get the actors to the locations and to see it because it was going to have such an impact on them. And it was they were and we they joked, they're like, yeah, being able to walk in here is, is the same as putting on our clothes for the first time. We really it, it elevates our characters to to in ways that we weren't anticipating. So is there a little movie magic involved? Is the interiors different than the exteriors? Because I was wondering about not to give away, but the, there's one specific room that happens to show up and i'm like that, that room is actually that room is actually in that place <laughs> <laughs> then i don't want to know what kind of hotel it actually was maybe then you know <laughs> yeah so the yeah that that put that that that, that wow. mansion that castle was filled with a lot mm -hmm. of fun surprises you know that that that's impressive but you you, you got that and, and that really worked effectively for you know the material that you have and everybody involved uh, definitely being behind it. One of the shots I really loved and it felt a little bit old school was uh, the split screen you did. When we get the call between our killer, uh, played Shelly Henning was fantastic in this. I was like, she is just a delight. Delightfully evil is is way to put it. <laughs> but when she calls, you know, Cassie, and you've got that split screen, I'm like, I like that. I like <laughs> you know, that was, it was funny was, so Charles, when I got the first draft of the script, he had written a split screen into the script. Oh, and I, and, and I remember, and it was, it was the only one that was actually in the script at the time. And I, and I called Charles and I'm like, what, where's this split screen coming from? And he's like, ah, you know, he's like, I just watched Narc. And, <laughs> and, I, th and I thought, sure. you know, I thought the split screen, and I'm yeah. like, but I think it really works. I said, it's not, I said, I don't think it, it doesn't come across to me as a gimmick, um, you know, with the relationship the two of them have to have, but they can't be in the same room. Mm -hmm. I thought I was like, it's so effective. I think we need to put it into, into the movie more, um, you know, so we developed out some of those other scenes so that it wasn't just two people on a phone right. and we're cutting back and forth, being able to have them in the screen together through the split screen I think it, it impacted the way we we visualize or, or the way we feel about their characters. Well, it it really brought home the idea of the parallel, and I I liked the layers to uh, both our villain and our PI Cassie. Um, I liked the layers to them that there wasn't just they weren't just one beat characters that there was very similar parallels, and then visually paralleling them on the screen, I was like, okay, that's effective. I'm like, okay, you know, that's. <laughs> That that helped it, it, you know. That helped enforce that. I appreciated that. I, I recognized that. I, I liked that. I thought it really brought home the idea. In case anybody watching wasn't paying attention, how they're very similar in some ways. They're, you know, yeah. Cassie's only two beats and a bullet away from being <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, and one of the things I've got to give credit to RJ, RJ Cooper, my editor as well. And I've done RJ, RJ was on board the project it was, as, as we were kind of getting into it. He was one of the mm -hmm. first people involved in the movie. And so I remember RJ reading the script and, and Austin and I, when we were preparing all of our shots and our camera work and stuff, we had a conversation with RJ and I think at the time, even even that early in the process, we were still just kind of figuring out what we were going to do with the split screen process. Mm -hmm. 
And RJ was the one who kind of came up with the idea of starting to, let's just not make it a typical half and half split screen. Let's, let's do horizontals. Let's do, you know, verticals. Mm -hmm. Let's play with the relationship so that we're continuing to tell the, the emotional story and the connection between the two of them by interchanging what that split screen is and, and how we're going to move slide in and out of it, mm -hmm. um, which then just got Austin and I completely going on all, you know, and it became, <laughs> It became a bigger job than we expected on sure. pulling off the split screen once we decided how far we were going to go with the split screen. <laughs> we were constantly having to really pay attention to where they were in their own frames and how that was going to slide. And at the same time, I, I wanted to make sure that we shot those together. Right. So, you know, a lot of times when they shoot split screens, you're, you know, you shoot one scene, then you shoot the other and you put it together. But we were able to find locations in a way that we could keep them separated, but be filming them, filming them at the same time. They had oh, earwigs, nice. so they could hear each other. Um, and I'm watching dual monitors with them in complete. I mean, sometimes <laughs> they were they were 100 yards apart from each other, you know, camera crews in one place and camera crews in another place. And I'm on radios to both of them. Um, but they got to do their scenes together, together, interacting with each other and with the camera. Well, and it, that, then it comes off more natural to absolutely to that, and that's where uh, that at the end of the you know at the end of the mm -hmm. day that's really why i wanted them to be able to do it together was to to have that natural interactive performance yeah and i also appreciate that antonio banderas again i hope no one takes offense but is it just a, a gimmick cast you actually have them in here for more than five minutes into the <laughs> film i was worried i'm not going to give away that i was worried a little bit i'm like Oh, come on, really? But then you have the flashback scenes and such, you know, to where... Oh, I see what you're getting. I see what you're getting at. Yeah. You, you I, get I'm more totally later honest. because it, it's not a bad thing, but a lot of movies I watch where they have a larger name like that, the person shows up, they were there for a day shoot or whatnot to do some scenes, and then you no longer see that person in the rest of the film, you know, right. just... Just because of of the way indie film works, I understand completely. Uh, but I was appreciative that we got to spend more time with his character. And in fact, I'd love a spinoff with just his PI character because he was so We joked about that. Antonio and I and Austin, actually, the three of us all <laughs> joked about that, that we need to do a little prequel, a little prequel and kind of do a spinoff with his character and <laughs> how he got there. <laughs> Because I loved his attitude and everything, the mentorship, you know, that he took on for taking with, uh, you know, the Cassie character who Allison, him really seemed to have great chemistry together. Did they uh, spend time together before they started actually shooting or was it just kind of natural? How did they they got to spend very little time together? Mm -hmm. Actually, it was it was there was just a natural chemistry. Um, once again, we got to shoot them in continuity as well. So the opening scene of the movie, which is how they how they came together, how they got to know each other and, and find each other, that was the first thing that we shot. Oh, um, nice. And then and then all of their subsequent scenes, we were able to kind of be able to shoot in continuity. So they were, and of course that their relationship in the movie is continuous; it's evolving throughout the story. And so they were able to to kind of do that together, you know, as we filmed them through all of their scenes and such. And and I think. You know, Antonio is a mentor. His character is a mentor to to Alice's character, and 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 he takes on a very fatherly role with mm -hmm. her. Um, and I remember one of the most beautiful, without giving anything away, but their their final scene together, um, the fatherly nature that he has taken on, and and how that came through, and the emotion in his eyes and in his delivery. Um, that's one of the things I don't think people give Antonio enough recognition for. I think we think we see him a lot in action movies mm -hmm. and we see him, you know, Desperado and, and, yeah. you know, being the action guy and he, and he's done, you know, some incredible comedies and things like that, but the drama, his ability to, 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 mm -hmm. to do drama and the nuances of, of his character, you know, he's an amazing actor. He's an incredible actor. And I felt like this, I felt very blessed that he was able to really just be an amazing actor, you sure. know, a dramatic actor in this movie. And that, that was, that was a blessing. I I wasn't expecting either. <laughs> well, he gets to see it, say a lot with his eyes. Um, you know, I, I, it, another character, uh, another actor who you usually associate with one thing, but is actually, I think very good at drama was Tony Todd. He was, uh, Absolutely. in, um, I think the last man on earth it was called or whatnot to where uh, he got to play 
a teacher, a professor, and it's a whole dramatic film, you know, about this guy debating on whether or not he's immortal. And Tony's fantastic in it, but you wouldn't picture him this. Just like Antonio here, you don't picture him as being this kind of quieter character, but he does it, he pulls it off, and he says so much with his eyes and, and everything that it was, you know, it came off. It is a very endearing character. Uh, that's good. I'm glad. Yeah, that's the way I felt. I was so happy with that. And, and I know he was he he really when we got done filming, he gave me a really big hug and he was like, thank you so much for letting me play this character. Yeah, he he definitely was into it. Now, we mentioned and, and again, we're not giving spoilers here, but we mentioned the dark material. Uh, and I thought you handled it some of the more sensitive dark material, especially when we get into, you know, uh, some of the history of that considering the subject matter. Uh, is there stuff in there where you had to kind of weigh how much do we allude to and how much do we actually, you know, show it? Because that same subject, I've seen it done both ways to where they either do too little or they've done too much to where you've totally turned your audience off to anything else. Right. No, we definitely we definitely spent a lot of time really thinking about that. And mm -hmm. really, I mean, some of the some of Charles's script, everything in Charles's script is in the movie. Oh, nice. um, now okay. the way he describes some of it could have been a lot more violent, um, mm -hmm. a lot more exploitive. Um, and that was something that we, we had a lot of conversations at a, at a produ producerial level as well, you know, with the distributors and, and things like that of how, how far can we go? Mm -hmm. Um, and how, how much, how much can we get away with them? So we all, while we were in pre-production got on the same page as to what levels everybody was comfortable with um, and felt was, was right for the movie. And, and I felt like, and I don't feel like I ever got compromised. I felt like at the end of the day, the choices that we made, mm -hmm. what we show, how much we show, you know, all of those type of things, I felt like we hit the right balance that was necessary for the movie to keep the movie from tipping over into any sort of exploitation, but to keep it grounded, keep it real. And I've always been a, a big believer that, you know, if I can express something that gets into your imagination, it's going to be more effective than what I can show you. And I, yeah. and I felt like, I felt like the, the, the balance that we found with the movie did that. So there are a couple of extra gory scenes, which looked wonderful, by the way, uh, <laughs> the, the head gimmick. We'll just, we'll tease it that way. The head gimmick. I love the head gimmick. I thought that was, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> the kid filmmaker and me had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> but, but you don't have it an excessive amount. You have it in the right spots, I think, uh, as well, uh, to where it's effective, but not overdone because you get that as well sometimes where it, it's a little, too overdone you know to where again it kind of takes you away from what you're going for in your film and everybody's kind of focused on that well did you see that that guy had no arms legs or hey he was just a torso oh my god you know right, yeah. <laughs> well and i think one of the things that's important too is is as the story's progressing and we as an audience begin to understand more and more of what's going on and what has happened we need to sort of build the level, the 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 emotional horror of, mm -hmm. of the circumstances. And I th I think that was one of the conversations that I had with a lot of people, a lot of my, my creatives as we were kind of doing it was also that we don't want to give too much too fast. Right. Because if we if we get there, we I didn't want to desensitize the audience too early. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you you will surprise people. Let's just put it that way. Uh, the Dottie character, I'm I is stuck with me. Let's just put it that way. I'm well, Owen's just. Oh, I, I mean, oh. I couldn't have asked for anybody better than Owen to be Dottie. <laughs> oh man, that that role when when you get to the later out of the story and you learn more about the character, I'm just like. Oh man! <laughs> it was, it, it well, was and it's funny that 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 little thing you just did, yeah. like the moment I saw her face pop up as a casting choice, I'm like, oh, I know she can bring that. I know that she'll, but she's going to bring that to the whole role. It was great, and she brought exactly what you needed for it. And I, I and that's what I like. There were some bold choices, some some uh, uh, interesting choices in here, and then, uh, especially I thought it was interesting. You you've got many films under your belt you've taken on basically a first time feature writer 
script uh was it just the subject matter that that pulled you in or what was it about this script because he's only done two other shorts or wrote two other shorts so. right well i mean charles and i have been friends for 20 years oh, and okay. so, so so we've been friends we've actually got a couple of other scripts together as well um charles we we've done we had done three scripts two or three scripts together okay. um and charles to, for myself is one of the most amazing writers of dialogue um, I love Charles's dialogue, and I've even had him polish some of my other scripts before on dialogue passes. But this was the first one. I, I think this might have been the first one that he sent me in quite a while that was completely his own. Like I had, I didn't even realize he had written it. And he's <laughs> like, you know, he's like, hey, I've got a script for you. And I'm like, oh, great, you know. And I read it, and it was, you know, it, it was the characters and the story and the dialogue on all those things. I mean. He's such a gifted writer, and I'm glad that I got to be the person to direct, you know, the first feature <laughs> of, from one of his scripts, and and hopefully we're going to get to do many more together. Well, well, I hope so because yeah, this uh, the pairing worked well uh, overall, and again, I was impressed. I've watched a lot of indie films, and especially a lot of. I, I usually do indie horror, but thrillers as well. And, the, you know, there are various levels, but this one, I will say, surprised me as how uh, strong it came across. And you're getting a theatrical release. Is it getting digital release, too, or is it doing it, just... So it'll be, it's it's exclusively theatrical, so it'll come out tomorrow, um, okay. you know, across the country, and it'll it'll do its theatrical run, and then, it, then it'll move to the streaming. It'll, you know, it'll... I, I don't know what the release date yet is. It'll be in a few weeks, but it'll go to digital and streamers in a few weeks. Oh, nice, nice. And what do you got coming up on deck? Um, so the after, so funny enough, after this one, uh, later in the year, later in spring, I've got a movie called The Cleanup Crew coming out that we also shot in Ireland with Antonio as well. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Well, when you have the cast and everything there, everybody else will take advantage of it, right? Exactly. I mean, that's that's that that's that true independent spirit. I mean, it was. I, you, hey, Antonio was game for it, so we went and did two back to back movies. <laughs> I mean, I, I've seen that from a number of directors to where they do back to back films, uh, and they have similar casts because they have everybody there. They're like, I got another script. You guys got a week? We could do this. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. So uh, your my final question would be, uh, what advice would you have for some up and coming indie filmmakers out there if they want to cut their teeth, so to speak, on, on making a film? I mean, I think I, I always just try to tell people that if you've got the dream and you've got the passion to be a filmmaker, just go out and do it. Mm -hmm. You know, start with some short films, get your, you know, kind of learn learn your your own style and your own technique um you know playing with short films and and experimenting yeah. and trying things out i mean i've done a, i've done a lot of my own short films through the years where i'm like i've got an idea and i just want to play with it i want to see what i can do with it but i don't want to i, I want to just test it first and so <laughs> you know do some short films kind of you know under learn your process learn how to work with actors and and most importantly learn to understand the script that you're making. I think there's a lot of filmmakers out there that just decide they want to go make a movie, but they don't understand the movie that they're making. And so oh, I always sure. tell everybody really spend time learning the art of filmmaking, not just deciding to be a filmmaker and, and, but regardless, just go out and do it. And, and be open to collaboration, right? There's a oh, lot 100%. of people. That's the whole, that's the whole, that's the, that's the key to everything. I mean, sure. I, I know there's been so many filmmakers and I'm one of them that says that I'm only as good as the people I surround myself with. Mm -hmm. So collaboration is a huge part of it. And, you know, I try to select people that, that will take my idea and make it better than I thought it could be. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, John. This has been a pleasure folks. Check it out. Cult killer. Keep an eye out. Uh, do you, are you got socials uh, where they can keep yep. track of you? John keys? It's J O N K E E Y E S. I'm the only one out there. So you'll find me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all the okay. places. So there you go. Keep up to date. If you can't make it to a theatrical release, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that digital release. And thank you, John, so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.